And we're ready to go. I'm so glad we're here. I love that color behind you, Karen. Oh, thank you. Yes, often I wear colors that match it. So I kind of blend in. <laughs> It's so good. So um, before I do your formal invitation, I do, I usually start off with some kind of a digital marketing tip. And it's interesting, rather than giving like a screen share tip that I normally do, I was thinking about the conversation you and I were going to have today. I know we've talked at length about the robot mind and getting things done and creativity and calling in uh, creativity. And I was listening to a podcast by, um, it's the Story Brand podcast, and this particular one was not Donald Miller. It was um, the other people on his podcast, JJ, Dr. JJ Peterson, and oh, I forget the other woman's name with a K. And they were talking about when you're putting together your messaging and how how they they kind of follow the story brand formula you know who who are you going to be a hero for and what's the journey you're going to go on with with um you know who you're going to be a guide for and what's the journey you're going to be on with the person that's your hero that you're the guide for that you're bringing them to their ultimate destination and in putting together that they were talking about the struggles with a lot of creatives right where they don't want to be boxed into something where they where their creativity might be squelched and at that point i was thinking about the people that i work with where i'm always like you guys if you help me if we can do this together if we can create a content calendar together if you know what your themes are what your days are what your you know if you just can visualize that your life is going to be so different and what i hear often it's actually the second thing. The first thing I hear is I don't want to bother people. So let's get over that mindset and we'll talk about <laughs> how your sharing is your caring. But the second thing is I don't want to squelch my creativity. I want to be in the moment. I want to feel the flow. And, and I get it, but having experienced both sides, right? You can still show up in the flow. You can still show up in all of your creativity. But if you have a roadmap to go by, if you kind of know where you're going, it, it just frees you up. It's the same, similar to having, let's say, knowing the chords on a guitar. Knowing the chords on a guitar aren't really going to um, affect your creativity, but they are going to give you that that path. You know which chords sound better together. If you're an artist, you know which colors complement each other's and which ones are going to uh, um, kind of aggravate that. So, so to that, content calendar is huge. I, in the Rise Above Noise Facebook group this month, I had suggested that we read The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan. That's probably backwards, you guys. Um, Gary Keller is the one who started Keller Williams, the real estate. Um, and I've been on their site a lot this week listening to podcasts because my book didn't come until yesterday so i was like i need to learn more about this book so i've been on their website listening to their webinars listening to their podcasts and what i've um, taken from that is becoming again clear on not what your robot mind right what we're going to talk about mm -hmm. today is but really knowing what is the most important thing for you to do in your business to bring you the next level? And I did not have that clarity and I'm not sure that I do, but I do know now that based on what I'm learning from the one thing, I am putting one hour each morning towards just a shorter term goal. I want to create a support system for heart-centered entrepreneurs to lean in and learn on their own on their own journey, on their own time, rather than having to commit to a coaching package with me and so what does that look like so one hour each day first thing i do after my morning routine is to sit down and spend an hour on just a small task if it's just my um, welcome video it's my welcome video it's, it's creating my first emails creating my first email so that by mid-january i can create this thing that's not only going to serve me it's going to serve my um, my audience mm -hmm. 
And, and I thought this kind of all tied in. I, I w I'll go on another time about the whole scheduler thing, right? Using a scheduler so that people can get on your schedule. Like all these things that we do to free ourselves to be up, to be our most creative self, to free ourselves up to be our most creative self. So I'm really looking forward to what you have to say, Carrie, on this topic. Can I make one comment before we go oh, into the form? Please. Yeah, this is awesome. This actually balances with robotic mindset, what you're talking about, because I fought having systems. Yes. And um, once I came up with a leadership system, coach principles, my creativity flowed unbelievably. Um, because what happens is you're not spending time wondering what if or what to do. When you create a flow, you become in flow mm. and you actually are opening up your ability for, for creativity more than if you try and stay outside of any boundary, then you're always constantly looking to find the edge. And when you're looking to find the edge, you, you can't be creative because you're, you're a little bit um, functional or robotic because you're constantly out and that adds stress or negativity. And when that happens, your flow goes um, by the wayside. So I, I absolutely agree with you. I fought structure for a long time myself, but my business has soared um, since I put systems into place. I'm so glad to hear that because um, again, and, I and she did not pay. Susan is not paying me for that. <laughs> no. no, but I find that I'm attracted to people, right? Like we, you and I have have known each other over a few months through the poker yeah. powerhouse. And I was attracted to how you presented, right? You're a coach, you work in big companies, we'll talk about this, but you talked about intuitive and about flow and when, it, when mm -hmm. the words speak. We were just talking um, earlier about the post-its that are behind you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you were explaining that it's your coach principles and the C and the O, A-C-H all mean something, but that when you sit down to write, and this is the book you're writing, that you look at words that have come to you, the spirit has spoken or, you're, or you've um, channeled, whatever it is, mm -hmm. then you look at that. And even though it's a system, it's helping you to use your creative juices to put it all together. Exactly. And by having the system, I'm not trying to remember those, those, those clarity moments. Right. You know, when something, that's why it's stickies. People, I've known for my stickies. And that's why when something hits me, that moment of aha, I document it, put it aside, so then I can stay creative in what I'm working on. Um, so, so there's cool. a lot to what you're talking about. So you guys, we could talk forever, but I do want to introduce you to my friend, Carrie Beers. So Carrie is the CEO and founder of Lead Like a Coach, and it is the letter spelled out C-O-A-C-H, and she'll probably talk about that. Her superpower is helping entrepreneurs and leaders be fully present in their lives to create by creating the space and the stillness they need to discover their authentic self so they can see possibilities to grow and be authentic leaders that people trust so we already kind of talked about it where uh, the topic for today is is your mind is your robotic mind mind sabotage oh my goodness sabotaging <laughs> your growth carrie i'm so glad that you're here today that was a nice quick intro so that we can get down to the good meat of what you've got for me today absolutely absolutely thank you susan um often a lot of people ask me about coach principles and just to before i give you the 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 um meaning for coach principles i think it's important to understand a couple of things is you know we're all born with the ability to have abundance. We have an abundance of talent. There's no, nothing holding us back. We have full capacity to reach whatever full potential desires and greatness we desire. It's when we take our first step that we start having influences come into our life. We have other people who are telling us, do this, don't do that, um, all the things that we're supposed to go for. And I never really thought about how that relates to um, our businesses or, or things that we're doing. But what I discover is whether you run a business or whether you're trying to have your best life ever, whether you're trying to lead a team, whatever it is you're trying to achieve, our mindset is critical to how we fully show up and how we fully live and what we're able to achieve. My new thing is we can only dream or plan as big as we believe, as big as we think. 
So when I started my life work, which is now a system called Coach Principles, you know, Coach Principles stands for being a strong communicator, being open-minded, having an open heart, being an open thinker, being aligned with your life, with yourself, with your business, with your company, with every, the people you hang with, all of that. And being curious is about don't settle. Let's be creative and explore and question everything. And to my surprise, I was amazed to find out how many people couldn't easily incorporate coach principles. Now, I had been incorporating them for 30 years and embedding them into businesses. And as I created the principles where I was really calling out what coach meant, I was asking people to stretch and to go beyond their comfort zone. And I didn't realize how much beyond their comfort zone because so many people were stuck. You know, the thought of thinking outside of the box, the thought of being creative, it was just too many things were holding them back. Um, people have fears and, you know, uh, again, other people's principles and philosophies were, were muddying the water for them. So I just started focusing on what is that really about? And what it is, is we become robotic. You know, we, we become so caught up in the things that we do every day. And, and as the mo world moves faster and technology comes into our life more, we're going at warp speed to coin a phrase from one of those, either whether it's Star Wars or, or um, one of the techie right, shows, right. you know, and it's true, you know, so if we're trying to check off our list, how can we be fully present? You know, so robotic does that. And I think you were at a talk where I said, let's think of the sacred morning routine. And you thought, you just said it, you know, you try and take an hour a day to be creative as moving your business forward, which is fabulous, but I'm going to build something for you. So sacred morning routines might involve getting up, working out, doing your journaling, doing your thankfulness, meditating, and doing an hour of growth. The next day you wake up, you work out, you journal, you do your meditation, you do your gratefulness, you do your hour of work. The next morning you get up. I think you can see what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. yes. you know, we, come, we turn what's supposed to be one of the most sacred presencing and mindfulness things for us, and we turn it into a checklist, the things I need to get done in order to start my day. And when we do that, we're not taking the time to fully embody what it's about. So myself, I have seven or eight things on a morning routine, my sacred morning routine, but every morning I sit with, what am I being called to work with? What is really going to serve me for this day? What is going to help me remain present? Um, so I do all I can to avoid turning it into a checklist. So, but when, so let me ask you a question then, because I don't do my morning routine every day because some days it's my morning routine is walking on the beach. Some days it's walking in the woods with the dog. Some days it's sitting on my mat and meditating. But if you block out your time and say, my first hour is to do a walking meditation or meditate, whatever it is to kind of get into mm -hmm. your soul. And then if journaling is a part of what you do, that, I mean, that's kind of a way to download or upload for the day. A lot of people do it in the nighttime. Mm -hmm. Would you say that that's ro robotic or would you say that it is helping you to get some structure like we were talking about with the content calendar, right? Or having a scheduler. Mm -hmm. Can you be creative within the confines of you're saying robotic mind and if I say a, uh, a routine? Right, right. Yeah, tell me the difference. Actually, the difference is how you come into it. Yeah. So the different, you know, for instance, we all probably set time aside for everything. And in my morning routine, I could either go and work out. I could um, do, do um, stretch. You know, there are a variety of things that I could do. The, the way that you stop it from being a checklist is feeling into what you should do first. You know, so if you do walking meditation, but you also do journaling, maybe there's a morning you've got something in your head mm. that you really should journal first mm, so that I you see. can be fully present when you're doing your walking meditation. Gotcha. So just take that few minutes beforehand to ask body and source where you should start. Gotcha. So that's having a system, but still being fully present. Got it. I love that. I love that. And so um, 
what are some of the other examples of, of robotic mind that you would like to challenge today? Sure. I think one of the ones that I usually, I love when I can see people and I can't see people today, but one of the things that is usually um, a lot of fun is let's think about the, the way we show up at things. Like if you, um, at your home, do, does everybody sit in the same chair at the kitchen table for dinner? Right. Um, do you sit in the same place when you watch TV, when you read, when you do things. And I get we have our comfy zones, yeah. but sometimes when we get too comfortable, we could start clogging our flow yeah. and becoming robotic. And my, it's just my son and I, and we had a table that sat eight and we would sit at the same seats every day for dinner. So one time I said, let's, let's change seats. And he, we both sat down and it was like, this is just too uncomfortable to do it. <laughs> But we forced ourselves to try and do that because when you equate food, sometimes it's something about equating comfortable, you know, mm. being comfort. Um, so you, so you, you know, you want to, you want to find ways to shake it up. I encourage you. It's hilarious to watch your family try and sit at a different seat at the table. If you're so focused on the same seats that you're doing. And um, another area again with seating is when I work with companies, because a lot of times I'm trying to get people to think differently and they'll come into the room and they sit at the same seat near the same people every time we get together. So often um, after I get, oh, I shouldn't say this because then people will know what I'm going to do. <laughs> but after I get working with, with the team, I have them come in and not sit. And then I challenge them to go and sit in a different chair and to sit near different people than they normally do. And you would have thought I was taking their fingernails off like a Japanese with, with some kind of, with some kind of torture, torture or something, device. because they just it really, they, they all pause. And it's like, I, I don't know really what to do. Really and changes takes, up the energy, doesn't it? It does. And the rhythm of the room changes because people get in, you know, they're comfortable yeah. when they can sit and they can do what they want. But when you, when you stretch yourself and you sit somewhere else, we have some of the best sessions once we do that because people are now thinking differently and you're seeing the room and everybody else from a different perspective. And that's what coming out of a robotic life or mindset is about. It's just taking a moment and really looking at what's happening. Um, you know, one of the worst things I hear with like nails on a chalkboard for me is when somebody tells me that's the way it's always been done. Oh, yes. It's like, come on. We would not be where we are in our evolution as, as the way we live, the way we eat, the way, maybe not all of it's good, you know, the way we show up technology. If the people who have this creative, beautiful mind said, well, that's the way it's always been done. And no disrespect, but if you don't look at that's part of what being aligned is about and being curious with coach principles, if you don't have the capacity to step out of that day, to break down that silo in the business, to do all these things, even in your own self, then you're not going to be fully showing up or fully doing something. I had someone who ran a report when I went to work. This is when I worked in corporate America. They ran a report every month and I watched them run the report and put it in a file in their desk drawer. And I finally asked, I said, you know, what is that report for? And they said, I'm not so sure, but I was asked to run it. So I run it and I put it there and people know that it's there. I said, has anybody looked at it? And it was like two managers before me that had asked them to do that. And they said, no, but it's part of my tasks. Oh my goodness. And, you know, and no, no disrespect. I mean, I'm manager number three coming in. Did the other manager who was there prior to me even notice what the person was doing to correct it? So that's what I mean about, you know, take a breath, you know, breathe, step outside, um, do things. We're a reactive society because we're, we're, we get called out. You know, we're going along. Some of you who are listening are watching may remember the the Dunkin Donuts commercial time to make the donuts yeah oh yes and, you yeah. know and it was always just time to make the donuts I think that's a perfect example of robotic it's like the the guy gets up and he's just kind of trudging along and no matter what was going by him on that street 
he was not going to notice it. Well, we tend to do that even at work or, or if you're on your way to a client. If you just go from point A to point B and you don't observe the environment that you're going by, you're putting yourself in a silo. And so when you're having a conversation. This is such, so interesting to me too, because I know that you work with, within a lot of corporations and companies. And a lot of people who might be listening to us today because of my audience might be a solopreneur. Correct. Or, or trying to be a solopreneur. And so what I hear oftentimes is this, I've tried that, it doesn't work. I've tried that, it doesn't work. Or I've been doing this and it doesn't work. And I keep doing it and it doesn't work. So I'm thinking about what you're saying. And the whole time you're talking about mixing it up in the table, right? Like when I do yoga, often, you know, you put your hands like this behind your back. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the teacher will say, well, if your left thumb is usually over your right, switch it up and put your right thumb over your left. And you're like, whoa, that feels yeah. so weird. Yes. And I would imagine yes. in a business setting, right? If I say to you, why are you sharing other people's posts every day, right? Why are you sharing posts from Wild Woman Sisterhood or da 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 da, da? Why? Why? Mm -hmm. Well, because I need to be on social media. Mm -hmm. And so... I feel like that could be the, to be similar. Like I'm trying to put your things into what right. entrepreneurs are doing. We, they're doing things. They're spending time. They're, they're spending time looking for it and then deciding is a hard thing. And then they put it up and, and what is it? So to what you're talking about, if you shift a little and you think about the energy that you're putting towards something, like what would you say for a solopreneur to use, to use these kind of uh, non sure. we, things? Yeah, thanks for saying that. We actually have a coaching package using coach principles for solopreneurs mm. and entrepreneurs also, because, you know, when we're, even when we're working in a, in a big corporation, if we're working with an individual, we're trying to open people up. So if you're a solopreneur like myself, you can see my sticky notes. We've talked about that. This is just one place I work. You know, I have another um, setting, another chair, a comfy chair and, and a table set up so that I can take my laptop and sometimes I will just go and sit in a different location to do that. When you work alone, it's easier to get into a robotic mindset in your day. Mm -hmm. So you have to really, um, I kind of walk in my office space, my office room every day. And it's like, what am I feeling? How do I, how do I approach something? Um, you know, cause you do have, you have more routines than you think mm -hmm. um, when you're, when you're an individual. So if you're going to the same place, and we do this, I'm sorry, I'm jumping, but we do this often, like you mentioned going on social media and going to certain places. Oh, that's beautiful. But what about every third day, go out and discover something new? When's the last time you actually looked at what people who are doing like-minded work, like yourself, go out and really find out what's going on? Like, what are the trends? What's happening? Who's doing what? When's the last time you asked your clients um, what the benefits were of working with you yeah. so that you could constantly look at your program and you're constantly looking at your thing. And even if you have a system, I have a system and um, we're going to talk about an offer that I'm doing. I'm offering 2020 vision going into 2020 because I think everybody needs 2020 vision. Yes. And we don't have that because we get so caught up in everything else that's going on so it's time for us to be fully present in our businesses we talk about being a strong communicator sometimes that communication is with ourselves. it isn't just with other people it's like are we truly honoring ourselves and being who we truly can be and the way you can be is when you become very open when you align you know susan i'd ask you are you aligned with your business? Are you truly living your mission? Oops. <coughs> Excuse me. I know you your mission in your, cold. I know it. I apologize. Are you truly living your mission and your passion with your life purpose? And we constantly have to ask that as entrepreneurs because we went into business because of a passion. Right. And we have to turn that into a mission or a system. Yes. And the only way, and the way to do that is to stay fully present. So we give you the tools to do that. 
I want to talk to you about that. So, because we only have a couple minutes left, but I just want to reinforce what you just said. In my own, this, the past, I don't know how many months it's been, I've been working on what is my one big idea. I kind of knew what my mission was. And then I put a big idea and a signature program and a sig signature talk around that. I was working with Dolores Hirschman, Masters in Clarity on that. And once I figured that out, um, which is my, mine is my big idea is that if you can be seen, if you can be found, you can change the world, right? Mm -hmm. The more people that hear you carry, you're changing the world because you're making a difference. So in my program, the number one step in the Rise Above Noise program is dig into your, know what your mission, your big idea and your ideal client is and what you just said too. How often are you going out there and asking your ideal clients what was the benefit, right? So we have, again, I have systems, I have programs mm -hmm. for that. Like I meant a template where you can just get some feedback and know what people are having uh, struggles with that you're the one person that can solve that for them. So I love, I love when people come to me to help them with their online presence and they've already done the work you're talking about. They already know their mission. They already know, mm -hmm. you know what their purpose is in life and now they know where they wanna go. Tell me more about your program that you're putting together for 2020. Yes, so because I feel like a lot of us are not, 2020 just sounds beautiful, doesn't it? Does. It? it does. It's like we have this beautiful year coming towards us. And if you go to the eye doctor, you're always hoping you have 2020 vision. Oh, never, I've never had <laughs> never. I did until I was 18, so yeah. I know what it feels like. So when we have 2020 vision, it's almost like we're seeing our business whether we're trying to create our business, grow as a leader, grow as a person, whatever we're trying to achieve, if we can get to 2020 vision, we can set ourselves up for the perfect year mm. to have that vision alignment that we want. So um, we have a program, it's called Strategic Visualization, and we remove ego, we remove fear, limited beliefs, outside influences, and we put you into a, a little bit of a meditative state and then we start walking you through a series of visualization questions. And so you're authentically building out your plan for 2020. And when you're done with the visioning, we help you establish what that, what that looks like for you. And then how to, how to move forward there, from there with it. And we've eliminated a lot of the, oh, I don't know if people will, would want that. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's what I should do. Mm -hmm. We just completely bring you to a safe space, um, which is one of my gifts, is I can really help people feel safe when they make some big decisions for where they want to move forward. So we're offering at a very deep discount. Um, I don't want to talk about pricing, no. but yeah. if anybody's interested, they can um, email me at carry at leadlikeacoach.com. Okay. Um, they can go out to our Facebook page, lead like a coach, start following us there. I'll be posting a way to connect with us there. Um, I have a huge mission with leaders and with um, entrepreneurs. I, my life purpose is to bring joy and peace to as many people as I can. Mm -hmm. And having been in business for 17 years, I know there's a lot of you out there not feeling joy and peace oh, <laughs> within your business. True. But once you find that, it's bliss. Um, it truly can be done. We have a lot of people who um, make us want to stay robots. You know, I, you know, they say, why are you doing this? Why don't you just get a job? You know, there, there's so much going against us as entrepreneurs. I want to shift that a little bit. So we want to help set up 2020 vision. I love for, that. Now, is that a one-on-one -on -one program or a group program or, or a Zoom conference? How are you running that? We do this one-on-one -on -one with people, although we can do it in a group. It's very personal to your business that we're doing. So we, we have done it in group settings. I do, um, I do this with um, board of directors, CEO, and their executive teams. And we're able within hours to come up with a strategic plan versus days. And when I do it with entrepreneurs, we, it takes about an hour, hour and a half and they just walk away with such clarity on their business and direction, um, you know, because we come up with like four buckets, four themes. And if, you can't, if you're not working on that theme, ask yourself, why am I working on this? And if you keep working on that, put it on the parking lot because maybe you're not aligned. Gotcha. Maybe some, you're, you're doing something. You might've fallen back into a robotic state mm. or 
you 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 might have reached a little too far too fast in the visualization that we did and we just got to bring you back a step um so we're there to help you set it up for success and people who have done this have been amazed at um how much they accomplish in that year but also how much fun they start having again in life because everything is aligned and they have an idea i have a, now you've got my ideas going i know that we have to wrap up but um I'm going to ch chat with you after this talk and kind of run something by you. Absolutely. I'm so glad that you, first of all, that you're feeling better and <laughs> that you were able to speak this week, which worked out really well. And um, so I will be putting in the, sh the notes to everything, how people can reach you and to do the uh, 2020 vision work. You can follow um, Carrie's, uh, Carrie's business on Facebook, Lead Like a Coach. Thank you, Carrie. I'm so glad. Uh, thank you so much, Susan, for inviting me. And thank you to everybody who listens and or watches.